So we're going to revisit this little guy and see if we can find out the source of the noise from my uh, previous review videos. Check it out and see what, uh, what might be happening inside uh, that could be causing our issues. But before we do that, there's one very important thing I need to do. Here we go. So you may recall that uh, during the review video we had some issues with the quality of the, of the outlet being erratic and it was all over the shop. So what I intend to do in this video is we'll go in and make sure that we haven't got any sort of mechanical issue uh, between the output jack, the cabling main board, whether we've got any dry joints. Um, I haven't opened this up or investigated it in any way. You're going to be finding out as I go. So we'll open it up and test it. So what we might do um, is probably throw it on the oscilloscope and see whether or not we've still got that issue. I would hazard a guess that we have. Uh, I haven't changed anything. There's, there's been no adjustments or investigation as far as finding out what that issue was. But we will um, open it up, have a look at it from a mechanical point of view, making sure we've got connections are tight. There's, uh, there's no dry joints or issues, broken cable. Uh, between the output jacks and the motherboard or main board um, and we'll just see we'll just see what what's going on I don't think it, it's going to be an output inherent output issue from the board in the way it produces the voltage or the output um, but I guess we'll see okay so we've got the power supply hooked up to our oscilloscope and getting a baseline with no load at the moment we're set at 100 millivolts per division and it seems while there is noise on there it, it's nothing far from what we were looking at previously now we are going to apply a load and see if that has an effect on the quality of the output if it does start playing up again well my idea is to maintain the load for a period of time so we get some temperatures increasing within the unit and see if that has an effect and if it comes in after a while if it does i mean we've we've probably got a little bit of a clue into what's going on but at the moment this is delivering the required 12 volt and a typical waveform that you would expect from a switching power supply so what i'll do next is set up the electronic load and we'll increase the load and let that sit for a little while and, and see what happens with that. Hopefully we can replicate the issue we saw in the review video. Um, and then if we do, we may have a case to investigate further. Okay, we have the load set up to a certain degree, showing you the interface. The one volt shown at the top here is just the dropout voltage. So if this was to go into current limit mode and drop right off, this would cut out at one volt. That's all that means. What we're really interested in is the current uh, that this is going to sync and see what effect it has on our output and see if we can replicate that noise issue we had in the review, like I said earlier. So I'll run this up now. We're starting at 200 milliamp. Don't forget this is rated to 10 amp that it can deliver. So uh, we'll just work with 12 volt output at the moment and see what happens to our output there. Here we go. Okay, no, no real change at, at present. 2.28 watts. Let's start winding up the current. This will stop at uh, 60 watts. So once we get to 60 watts, if we get that far. Okay, so we're currently at 31.2 watts at 2.6 amps. Both displays are pretty much saying the same thing. We'll take it right up to the maximum of the electronic load and we'll see We'll hold it there for a period of time and see what happens. Quite a bit of voltage drop across the load leads. We're showing 11.7 volts at the load and 12 volts still at the power supply. The load uh, fan is ramping up. Okay, this is the limitation of our electronic load at 60 watts.
I'll stop the video here and we'll let this run for a period of time and we'll come back to see if there's any any developments. Many hours later. Okay, we've just been running a little over three and a half minutes at five amps, 60 watts, and our display, or our oscilloscope is not budging. We're not getting any of that, any of that noise that we sort of saw in the review. I might just turn this floodlight off because it's really washing out the screens. See if this helps. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe we should have done that in the beginning. So we've just hit the four minute mark on our uh, stopwatch here, and we've not had any real jumps. It's been very consistent as far as our waveform's concerned. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what was going on. Like we saw in the review, I was making sure that the connections were firm and there's no noise being introduced and I was using a probe rather than just IC clips like I've got here, but that shouldn't make any difference. There was quite vast jumps in the, in the waveform alluding to some issue going on with the power supply. So I have used this power supply to do a little bit of battery charging, um, when I say battery charging, just robust SLA batteries, lead acid batteries, uh, and just doing brute force sort of power supply stuff, nothing sensitive. I wasn't powering anything um, that required a nice, clean, ripple-free sort of supply. Okay, coming up to six and a half minutes. Still no evidence of an issue with the power supply. Should we strip it down and have a good look at the internal circuitry or leave it for now? Um, I think I might open it up anyway and just make sure the mechanical connections are where the, the connects to the front banana jacks and the solder joints to the main board, power board is uh, sound. I, I have no evidence to suggest there's an issue with the power supply itself. It could have been the way it was hooked up in the well connected in the testing in the initial review video i can't replicate the fault at this time so this is just over seven minutes in a constant 60 watts can't seem to find an issue with that i don't think it's, it's going to be a voltage related or output related uh, issue if it was going to be it'd probably present itself now i have been sort of tapping this around apart from the possible noise on the connections as you can see if i manipulate the connections I get a bit of movement in in the waveform but that's to be expected but I don't see any issues as far as knocking the case around and see if we can invoke the issue that we saw before so I'm convinced that it was a one-off and it was probably just the way we connected it up in the, in the initial review testing but so far so good what I might do is off camera I'll take the case off and we'll we'll zoom in on um, the mechanical connections in the unit and see if we can see any suspect um, connections there but apart from that I think we're good all right back shortly Okay, on first glance we see the connections to the back of the banana jacks. Just get this in shot. As you can see, right down behind the main switch there. We'll give them a bit of a wiggle. Once I can frame the shot. Oh, here we go. Now uh, there are ring connections. And they are tight. And they seem to be well crimped. Poke around that red one. Tight, well crimped, no movement. So we can probably rule that out. We can see that uh, on the main board, we can spot where the main wires come in. All right, let's get this framed. Here and here, the black and red cables coming in. We can see the solder joints are pretty well filled with solder. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Very solid and tight connections. You can tell that the solder has been on the wires long enough as it's um, what we would call capillary action up the wires into underneath underneath the jacket or the sleeve of the cable. So that is a fairly solid connection. I've got no doubts that that's gonna be a, a great connection there. Very robust. So I think we can put it down to, put it down to a possible um, PEBCAC on my part, the way we, that was hooked up. And although there's a massive blob, there is a massive blob of solder. Actually, that's not gonna show you shit because I'm not even framed. I don't know if you can see it. But you might be just, if you can just spy through between the heatsink plate and the bottom of the PCB, on the red, what seems to be the red cable, there is a massive blob of solder. Now, I don't know if that's, um, I think it might be worth popping this PCB out and having a closer look underneath just to make sure that that's not a cold joint. All right, I'll pop the, I'll pop the uh, PCB out off camera and we'll have a closer look. 
Okay, I've removed the board as best as possible. There's still a few um, hard wire joints that I don't really want to undo. So I've managed to uh, just free the board enough so we can see the underside. And you can see here on the positive, where the positive is coming through for the front banana jack. You see this massive blobby solder joint. Now that doesn't instill much confidence. And with that, on further investigation, a lot of these leads for capacitors, through hole capacitors, have been cut off really, really long. Now our standoffs on the um, Heat sink here, well it's acting as a heat sink, is about 10 millimeters long, but some of our joints here that probably cut five or six millimeters. So we've only got about a five or six millimeter clearance from what is a conductive surface. And if we look over here at our mains caps, we've probably got even less clearance on some of these connections. So that's pretty bodgy. We have, uh, the, overall the solder joints seem clean and, and well done. There is a lot of uh, flux residue. I'll just see if we can shift some of that with some isopropyl. Let's have a look here. Just want to see if we can dislodge some of that. And yes, I have discharged the caps. So there's, there's no issue there. All right, for the most part, the, the PCB is cleaning up. It's a bit uh, how you doing as far as removing the flux with the dew from a finished product. A little bit unprofessional. But for the most part, it's, it's cleaned up reasonably well. Yeah, I think we can live with that. But this joint, the positive joint up here, we'll have to look at and address that. That's, uh, that's no good. We will cut. In fact, we'll go over some of these through hole components, especially where the leads are left long, because I'm not happy with the, the amount of clearance we have there against our heatsink plate, which is up aluminum panel or aluminum panel. While there'll be minimal risk, it's just nice to have uh, any high voltage leads cut short. So we'll do a couple on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera. So we'll start with a couple of these low voltage ones. I mean, it, it's all time. Time is money when you, you, you're building cheap products. This product is, like I say, it's $80 landed. Whoops. And it does, it, if it's not necessary, then why do it? Technically, it's not necessary, but from a safety and a professional standard point, you'd, you'd probably want to give it a go and cut these legs off. They're actually pinging off and hitting my ceiling. It's funny. Something to be wary about. If you guys are buying these for your hobby electronics, I'd suggest you open it up and have a look. Some might argue that cutting the leads after the solder's solder joints been formed can crack the solder joint. Yeah, there is some truth to that. I'm not going to argue against it, but in my case, if I have an issue, I will uh, fix it. Okay, I'll fire up the old desoldering gun and we'll get rid of that blob. I'm not happy with that at all. Okay, it's been a few days since recorded a video on this repair, well, this investigation at least. So I'm back at it now. We've, we left off with looking at this joint on the positive wire. So we're just gonna get the excess solder off. Hopefully you can see the better part of that when it's in focus. And we'll see what we can do. Way too much solder. In fact, most of the uh, cable's jacket has come through the hole as well. So that couldn't have uh, made for a very good connection. If you can see that. You can see the bit of red peering through the hole there. So they've put the whole wire through, or the whole cable, and it's only really uh, captured on the back side of that joint. Probably why the uh, the solder didn't sort of fill the hole properly because there's a lump of plastic or PVC. I, I believe, yeah, it feels like PVC in the hole there. So anyway, we'll uh, pull that back out of the hole and redo the connection once it's in focus. Hmm, righto. And, uh, We'll go from there. So I've reseated the cable in the in the hole for the positive connection, and uh, I'm going to boost the soldering iron up to 350 because it's going to be a fairly hefty joint where um, there's a lot of copper around that that particular that particular hole, and it will sink a lot of heat away. So I'm going to put some flux just to help the solder. 
and we'll redo that joint as best as we can hopefully a lot better than what it was and we'll go from there apologies for my squeaky chair it's not doing too good these days plenty of heat and solder now it's looking a lot better already again the uh the red jacket of the cables decided to pop through again i think we might redo that joint altogether be right back so i've managed to get the cable out of the pcb and you can tell that uh, during it's heating up and uh, soldering into the board it's been pushed into the hole and it's created this massive uh, flange and that's what's come through some of the hole and maybe prevented some of the solder taking to that um, to the through hole on that pcb but anyway i don't think this was the cause of our initial issue but it's definitely not wouldn't help perhaps over time but uh, we'll repair it anyway and see how we go okay here we go take two A lot better. Lots better. Pretty happy with that. So the PCB is now mounted back into the unit. Uh, we've done a few repairs as far as some of the solder joints on the back of the board. All in all, they weren't too bad, but we did do a few uh, touch-ups here and there. So I think now between the original review and seeing that noise and whatever was happening it's not really apparent now so what i might do is i'm going to put this on test uh, at probably i don't know maybe 100 watts for an extended period see if i can see any anomalies if i do i'll uh, definitely bring you back and we'll, we'll go through that but uh, if i don't this will be the end of the video um, until next time thanks for watching